In the last few years, we have seen the number of people who are forced to flee their homes has been increasing consistently because of increasing number of disasters such as floods, cyclones, drought and sea level rise. Between 2015 and 2020, we have seen 18 million people were forced out of their homes just in five countries of South Asia. We as governments, as civil society, as communities are not prepared. There are push and pull factors both working. In some cases, we see that communities migrate because of better economic opportunities in cities. But the reality is that the push factors, which means increasing number of disasters, is pushing people much more out of their homes. Because their local coping mechanisms fail. As they are hit by disasters one after the other, they do not have resources to adapt and recover from these disasters. And we are talking about people who have no role in causing the climate crisis. In that context, where the political failure is responsible for this crisis, we have to make sure that the action is taken at all levels. At the international level, the commitments need to be increased so that we can bring down emissions dramatically and keep the temperature well below 1.5 degrees Celsius. At the same time, nationally, we have to have right kind of policies that help people build their resilience and not forced out of their homes as we have been seeing this trend increasing over the last few years. We also got support from European Union uh, through uh, International Center for Migration Policy Development and that has helped us to reach out to more number of countries. So at this moment we are working in six countries of South Asia Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Nepal, Sri Lanka and India and we can see how in all these countries communities are being pushed out of their homes and in this project as we understand the realities of communities at the same time identify policy gaps in the long term we, we want to engage policy makers, we want to uh, sensitize civil society, we want to make sure that journalists are covering their stories so the work is going on and in the long term we want to make sure that the resilience of these communities uh, are built and at the same time there are enough policy measures in place such as social protection for that communities, particularly women and young people, are supported so that they are able to cope with these climate impacts and we do not see distress migration in the region as it has been increasing over the last few years. When we spoke to communities, they shared stories after stories on how increasing frequency and intensity of floods and cyclones are taking all their resources away. Droughts are getting worsened and landslides are burying entire villages and sea level rise and river erosion are taking their land away forever. Now in that situation when they do not have any option and government support is inadequate they have no option but to leave their homes and especially men when they leave their villages and go to nearby towns or cities we find women face a particular tough situation. We have examples of increasing feminization of agriculture in India and Nepal. We have seen how they face increased burden of care and household work. And we have also seen cases of violence happening in these communities. Young people are losing their livelihoods. There is no adequate support where they can be reskilled. And they sometimes feel trapped in a situation where there are no opportunities in villages and in cities they are not able to find sufficient jobs. In that situation it is extremely important that we need to understand these impacts in a much more detail and make sure that the support is available to them at the local level in terms of creating solutions but at the same time policies uh, such as increasing social protection. Um, we have seen examples of um, employment guarantee program or pension or reskilling that does help in reducing distress migration. So those kind of programs need to be increased especially when we see how climate change is driving them out of their homes and they have no resources at the local level. Over the last one year we have also seen the interface of COVID-19 pandemic and climate migration. On one hand we could see how increasing number of disasters were driving people out of their homes but when they were hit by COVID-19 pandemic they were 
forced out of cities and they were returning back to home. So we have seen reverse migration happening. And communities who do not have uh, resources to fall back on, they were in a worst situation. Uh, and at the same time, we have also seen where governments were active and they were using social protection measures uh, such as providing them direct transfer into their accounts or creating local job opportunities, cash for work programs, subsidized food that also help these communities weather this crisis uh, of COVID-19 pandemic. So it actually highlighted that if you have a strong social protection scheme and measures in place, we can deal with disasters also that are caused due to climate change. So the importance of social protection has been underlined in these COVID situations. Climate migration and displacement is still a new phenomenon. We have not seen policymakers giving it enough attention because the issue is not that visible. Civil society organizations have a particular role to play to highlight this issue to look at the connection between climate change and displacement and forced migration. What factors are pushing people out of their homes? What measures can be taken? So those examples need to be brought out. We need to do a lot more research to understand this connection. We also need to generate awareness, not only at the community level, but also with policymakers, so that we can talk about that connection much more. We need to review policies that exist, that are working or not working, or what kind of new policies are required, and civil society can do such analysis and bring it to policymakers. And we need to generate awareness also at the level of citizens, because we have also uh, seen conflicts happening between displaced communities and host communities. So a lot needs to happen to make sure that we handle this issue in a very sensitive manner. And civil society can play a particular role in bridging the information gap and making policy makers aware. And the collaboration with media and journalists is going to be particularly vital. Um, journalists can play a very important role in making these stories much more widely available and accessible in, through different forms of media, social media as well as mainstream, so that it gets attention of policy makers. And that work has started in the region through uh, this project, South Asia Migration and Climate Project. We have been able to reach out to journalists and civil society, but a lot more needs to be done to make this issue visible and important for policymakers.